Oh, hello there, and welcome to another review episode, or yeah, another anime review episode. Today, I want to discuss a specific anime that's based on a story somewhere else. It's not in Japan, it's not in any other parts of Japan, or another period, but a different period that you could say maybe is fictionalized a little bit, I'm not sure, maybe a little bit, but I don't know. But you know, in my cozy winter shirt and just reading books during the cold season, you kind of want to sit back and relax and read a book about the past, how things were back then. And you know, back even in the 90s when anime became pretty popular, like it was starting to get out there a little bit over here, and then there was a specific anime that kind of Pretty much I remember seeing floating around on YouTube a long time ago, back in a galaxy far, far away. And it intrigued me because at the time I was all into Inuyasha. It, everything was just Inuyasha, Inuyasha, Inuyasha. It wouldn't be until many years later as of recently that I pretty much saw it around again. I mean, I might have seen it beforehand. To be honest, it was actually a blooper or just a funny OVA thing that they did for, for the show itself. but. But I remember how I was still intrigued to watch this anime. So I ended up buying it, but the company that I bought it from... Well, okay. I bought it from Right Stuff. But it's not Right Stuff's fault. It's Media Blaster's fault. I'm just giving you a warning now before I continue this review. Be careful about buying stuff from Anime Works, a.k.a. Media Blaster. Their digital codes are messed up. And boy, oh boy, I had issues with this set that they have. The quality sometimes dipped in specific episodes where it looked like a YouTube episode. This is a bad story here. I don't want to have bad stories like this when I'm all cozy and in my winter shirt. And I just want to sit here and relax and read something that's good, not bad. And that's a bad story, Media Blaster. You gotta work on that. Anyways, I'm off subject. Today, I'm going to be reviewing a specific anime that I'm... I really have a hard time pronouncing. Fu... Fuhiji Yuji? I think that's how it's said. Yeah, so this was an anime back from the mid-90s, and it came over here later, I think in the late 90s. And it was technically, you could say, the Inuyasha before the Inuyasha, but more of how my friend would put it, Matt Air, Journey to the West, sort of deal. Instead of it being set in Field of Japan, it's actually set in ancient China, which is an interesting take. And whether or not it's based off of something, I'm not sure, but I know this anime, I remember it floating around, and I recently watched all of it, and well, now I'm going to review this tale. Fuiji, Yuji, if that's how I'm pronouncing it right. Anyways, let's get to it, shall we? <laughs> So the plot follows Miyaka Yuki and her best friend Yui Hongo, two middle school students. While at a library one day, Miyaka and Yui encounter a strange book known as The Universe of the Four Gods. Reading this book transports them into a novel's world, universe, what have you, of ancient China. Yui is transported back to the real world almost immediately after being transported inside the book. But Miyaka finds herself the priestess of Suzaku. Miyaka is destined to gather the seven siestal, siest, celestial warriors of the gods Suzaku in order to summon Suzaku and obtain three wishes. She falls in love with celestial warrior Tamahome, who eventually reciprocates and Miyaka's desires to use the wish to enter the high school of her choice begins to shift towards finding a way to be with Tamahome. Yui is also drawn into the book when she tries to help Miyaka to come back to the real world. So overall, the plot, it's fun. It's a fun 90s anime story. 
I mean, the plot's not going to win any awards or anything. I mean, you may have some issues with it because I know there are cons in specific plots. It all really depends on your perspective of it. I mean, overall, the plot's fine. It can also go into a bit darker territories. It's like your Izekai sort of deal, sort of like the Inuyasha type of deals, a little bit. But man, for a 90s anime, this gave me nostalgia, even though I didn't see it back in the day. Just the art style, the quality, just that fuzzy feeling. Most of the animes from that time period will give me nostalgia. Even when it comes to the video games. And the music, you know, it's catchy for what it is for the for a 90s anime. Especially during the fight scenes. The opening is also good for a 90s anime. There is a specific song that was pretty catchy. I think it's some some woman that sang the song. Now for the animation, it's got that 90s style, which I like actually. Fight scenes are fine. I know the animation is older, but the art style is still good. And yeah, there are points where it's got high details. I know there's at points some goofy anime styles that they do for humor moments, which is kind of funny. But on the other hand, the show isn't technically for children. I'm just going to say. There are points with animation, you know, for the for the quality. Yeah, like it's it's. It, 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 it's it's good for the 90s perspective. I mean, yeah, it's older now, but it still has some pretty good details. Some fight scenes are good. There are some frozen points where they're kind of fighting and stuff, but overall, it's not bad. I like the art style because it does have that nice, beautiful 90s anime style that I like. The characters, on the other hand, there's a lot of characters in here. Miyaka, an outgoing and optimistic character shows herself to be kind with friends and strangers, and has a tendency to be guileless and sentimental. She is naive at points, but, but sometimes surprises adults with an insightful comment. While she's a character that cares for others, especially when they're suffering, she can be a considerable person. However, she does have one issue, gluttony, one of the sins, as she tends to not control herself around food. Kind of like how Death the Kid can't control his OCD when there's a specific situation. All in all, she's that type of Isekai female anime student character. Kind of like how Kagome got transported to another time period. This is kind of the same thing. Miyaka's that, like the Kagome, except in ancient China. So yeah, she cares for others. She has her moments, but sometimes she could be annoying. Maybe not as bad as Kagome, but she has those moments that might aggravate you. Now, Tamahome, on the other hand, is a strong fighter, one of the seven celestial warriors of Suzaku. He is the oldest of five siblings. He's a 17-year-old and was born in Hako Village. When we first meet his character, he saves Miyaka and Yui from slave traders. But after saving the two, he then only asks one thing. Well, I prefer money to any thank yous. Huh? Oh man, don't tell me I rescued a couple of losers. Come on now, girls. Money makes the world go round. However, he ends up most of the time saving Miyaka, especially in the earlier episodes, and then he's also the protector of Miyaka. They grow a big attachment together, and they soon pretty much fall in love. He is strong, and he uses mostly his fighting skills and his power. He's one of the strongest physical fighters of the bunch and uses his power to fight off foes and all the strength and power he has due to the Suzaku power. When he's emotionally motivated, he is able to use his chi to increase his strength, speed, and reflexes in combat. When you first look at Tamahome, you think he's a greedy guy that just wants money, but in reality, he needs that money to help his dad that is very ill. So that's what kind of makes his character pretty interesting. He's kind of like Naofumi. He'll do a good deed, but, but he's hoping to get paid for it. Tamahome, though, on the other hand, he's doing it for his dad. Now, Hotohori is the fourth emperor of the Kuon Empire. He is probably the most beautiful looking guy <laughs> in the group. I'm pretty sure all the ladies will fall for him. But he, too, is also a celestial warrior of Suzaku and uses a common sword. And, and as such, he is a powerful swordman and has been additionally trained in material arts since childhood. Hotohori is a kind man. Hotohori also loves Miyaka. At a young age, he was infatuated about the priestess of Suzaku and would become his true love one day. When Miyaka shows up, he ends up falling in love with her and becomes willing to do anything for her sake. As such, he becomes rivals with, yeah, you guessed it, Tamahome, for Miyaka's affection. 
His character, though, I felt bad for him at points because he was just trying to do what he can to satisfy Miyaka. In the end, though, he's a pretty good character. And he's also an emperor, but he also risks his life, even for his country. That is a good emperor right there, boys and girls. Now, Nuriko, on the other hand, well, let's just say you may think right now she's a woman, but in reality, no, he's a cross-dresser. Looks like a woman, though, I would say. He's actually very jealous of Miyaka. He, I guess you could say he is a gay character which loves Hotohori. As time goes on, they become close friends. He did have a sister that died when he was very young. He began behaving and dressing like her to keep her memory alive. Okay. He does possess superhuman strength. While prone to jealousy, quick and anger, and processing and calculating tendency, Nuriko is very level-headed and compassionate and shows the most concern regarding Miyaka and Tamahome's relationship as a woman. Yeah, he's a good fighter, and on top of that, backs up his friends. He does more of the heavy lifting than anything. Chichiri is a wandering monk, has trained for several years, a 24-year-old native of a village on the Shoryu River. He variously wields a Shakuju, I hope I'm saying all these right, staff, Kaza hat, and Keza mantel to fight and employs various magical techniques. Most of the time, you never really see his eyes open. I'm just going to say that right now. But he also says you know a lot. And that's a thumbs up. Oh, uh, Jerry, it's awful. What is it? I will see to Miyaka. I guess after three years, I'm used to her looks, you know? He is the oldest of the group, and yes, he's also a Susaku warrior. Chichiri thinks of himself as the older brother who looks after everybody else, appearing as a light-hearted character. He can put on some super formed type chibi stuff and also change his uh, character to look like one of the celestial warriors or anybody else for that matter. He has his serious moments besides this look. Those moments can be pretty interesting when you see his darker side or not darker side, I would say just more of his serious side. While Tamahomi and Hotohori are the obvious leaders, Chichiri is the very staunch advisor and supporter from behind the scenes, always willing to help when needed, unconcerned with his own morality or with earthly desires. Tasuki formerly led the Mount Rekaku bandits, extremely quick and agile. He particularly enjoys joking around with Noriko, Tamahome, and Chichiri. He's probably the more cooler looking characters in the show, but he's also pretty funny, too. Would you believe it that this is the same guy that voiced Timmy Turner's dad? Yeah, you probably would not have known that. He uses a specific fan to cause fire. Primarily weapon is a flame throwing. And most of the time he's just throwing it around or swinging it around like a fan to cause fire and eliminate the foes. To be honest, it's actually an iron fan used for fighting, which is eventually upgraded to become a diamond fan that could only be used by Tazuki. Though for a young age like him, Tazuki found his calling as a bandit when Hakuro, the chief bandit of Mount Reikaku, took him under his wing. He began to improve his martial arts abilities in hopes living up to and carrying on the role of his mentor. And yes, you will have fun watching him at points when he's goofing around. On top of that, he also picks fights but he's that type of character. Mizukagi is the healer of Suzaku's warriors. He is soft-spoken and one of the most serious of the Suzaku celestial warriors. His fighting abilities are limited to his own strength. He can heal people. However, though, using his healing abilities does cost some of his life force, but he does use it frequently to heal minor injuries. And yeah, he's just very serious, talks, soft-spoken, etc., etc. Moving on. Chiriko is the youngest of the group, but he's also a genius among the warriors. It is revealed that he's been studying for an examination to become a government official during his first appearance. For a young kid, but then again, this was back then, so I can kind of understand. He is smart, intelligent, but here's the thing, we don't get too much 
of him as the others. Like Tamahome, we got a lot of detail about Hotohori, Nuriko, Tazuki, and a little bit of Mizukage. Ah, these names! But his intelligence actually derives from his role as a celestial warrior. And when his character disappears, he becomes a rather average child with limited intelligence. Thing is, there's not too much to really say about him. Now Yui, the friend, she's a mature girl, intelligent. She is in 10th grade with Miyaka. They're both best friends and passionate and is also a passionate person at heart. She tends to see the world in black and white terms and is easily infuriated with perceived betrayal. However, when she got sucked into the book, and she got sucked into the book again, and a specific thing happened that I'm not gonna go into details, let's just say she becomes a different person that you will find pretty annoying. It's not until, well, uh, let's just say you're going to sit down and watch the, and figure out where this is gonna go for Yui because boy oh boy, there's a lot of stuff that happens when it comes to her character doing this, 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 and this. Now as for the villain, Nakago. He is the leader of the Seiyu Warriors. I probably did not pronounce that right. He is, yeah, the main antagonist of this show. Nakago is both merciless and is charismatic. And yes, he eliminates those whose usefulness to him is exhausted and skillfully manipulates others. Gosh, that kind of reminds me of another specific anime villain. Yeah. He's basically that type of villain that kind of gets away with doing whatever, manipulates others. He also pretty much gets away with some of the stuff, convincing a specific character of a specific thing that happened too. And on top of that, even doing something even just as bad too. Uh, he's just a villain. He's also pretty strong too. As Kuto's highest ranking general, Nakago commands two thirds of Kyoto's army. And you will just hate him, just like any other anime villain. So all in all, the characters are pretty interesting. But like I said, the kid doesn't really get too much time to reflect, except that you know that he's very intelligent. He's doing this examination, blah, blah, blah. I feel like the other characters had a lot more depth to them. Also, the villain had more depth to him, too. And there's another villain, a woman that's with him, and they get on with it. Uh, specific reasons why. But on the other hand, yeah, all in all, there you're going to find some interesting characters here and there. You, it's just kind of typical with which ones you think are more interesting than the others. I know which ones I found more enjoyable or interesting. I will say the love triangle after a while was like, okay, okay. It's kind of like that whole Inuyasha Kagome thing that Adult Swim did back then, except with Miyaka and Tamahome. Inuyasha! Kagome! Miyaka! Tamahome! Miyaka! Tamahome! Miyaka! Tamahome! Miyaka! So overall, the characters, you're gonna have some that are interesting, have some backstory to them. Well, a few, probably not, especially the kid. I feel like he didn't have enough time to show what he did, but then again, he's a young boy. I feel like Tamahome got enough. Miyaka also got enough. Hotohori. Nuriko, Chichiri, Tasuki, and Misukage. I, and even the villain, too. I think they all had a nice fleshed out development. But I feel like Chiriko, not as much. I mean, he's. He, like, he appears later on, and we don't get too much except for basically him being intelligent, smart, doing examinations whatsoever. But by day's end, it's all characters you're, you're gonna like. Most of them, and you know, my favorite is this guy, he's funny. And then obviously him, which does, you know a lot, I mean, who wouldn't hate him? Now as for my enjoyment, I gotta say, for 90s anime, it was pretty fun. It did remind me of Inuyasha in some ways, except not if you were Japan, more like Age of China, or I guess a fictionalized version of it in the book, that they get summoned into. I mean, let's be real, Miyaka Kagome. Tamahome, Inuyasha, gets summoned to another place. Same sort of deal, except just different. One's not harem, this is 
harem, but reverse harem, for that matter. Jeez, if you compare the two, they feel kind of the same, just a different twist. I will say, when it comes to the whole love stuff with Tamahome and Miyaka, the romantic moments, it'd be okay. It's fine. It's more, I guess you could say, like Vampire Night. But I gotta say, the interactions with the characters were enjoyable. There are some pretty dark moments too that specifically when it comes to specific matter that happens. Boy, to be honest, there was one episode near the end and in the aftermath of that that's, well, actually scratch that. It's right after the aftermath of a specific character that actually quite touched me a little bit. It was very sad because you could kind of relate to specific grief. Overall, it's an enjoyable 90s anime ride if you like nostalgia, because pretty much this gave me nostalgia for the 90s. I mean, come on, it's got Solid Snake in here. It's got Timmy Turner's dad. It's got Faye Valentine from Cowboy Bebop. What else could you want in here? There's a lot. He's a friend in a stranded in a strange place. Up, all by yourself, you know, she really needs some help. Are you listening to me? Can't you just say, all right, I'll take care of it, leave it to me? If you like the 90s, then this is one trip back to Nostalgia Lane. While I grew up only a little bit in the 90s, missed out a lot because I was just a child, I'm kind of going back to that period where things were pretty cool. I mean, things were just starting to get a lot better when it came to video games and animes and then movies continued to be great. Overall, I can say it's a fun watch for a 90s anime. If you liked Inuyasha, then you're gonna like this. This was before Inuyasha though. May have some points where it's, you know, it's fine. May not be for everyone, I will note, but you might enjoy it for what it is. Well, this is R. Toelius signing off for today. If you like this review, you can follow me. On top of that, I have a Discord server. If you want to talk about this specific anime, whether or not you've seen it or not, or you're interested to see it after seeing this, bada bing, bada boom. And Whoa, where the heck did you come from? I've always been here. And you're watching Harem. Well, okay, well, it's, it is Harem, but it's reverse Harem. It, but it, it's not like the whole... The, well, okay, it's got a few of those moments where it's like, mm, but, yeah. And you like the fan service. I do <laughs> not. Yeah. I don't really care about the fan service stuff. I don't care about the Harem stuff. I mean, I guess you could say this was the exception, but it didn't overly, I don't know. It's a 90s anime. It still has stuff in it that indicates a lot of stuff. Who let <laughs> this monkey in? Oh, Clowns. that is something else, I gotta say. Oh, the clowns aren't here. That's right, they're not here. What? They're in that world. What do you mean they're in, they're in this world right now? All of them? Ha, ha, all of them, all of them are in that world. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Wait, where's the book? It's a book of the sequel. Yes. <laughs> and the only way to get him out, the only way is to review the OVAs, what? the sequel to this harem fan service anime. <laughs> Why would you do this? I gotta review the other one to get him out. The book is in this studio. There he is over here. <laughs>